I'd like to call the meeting to order and welcome everybody to the Laverne Planning Commission, April 27th, 27th April, sorry, April 27th, 2021 at 6 p.m. meeting. Our first item of business is, Chairman, we do have a quorum and to approve the meeting minutes from the March 30th, 2020 regular meeting. I make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve by Mayor Cole. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Holliday. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Our first item is, is this one still active, Mr. Logan? Item number one? Uh, no, sir, I believe they're deferring. Okay, item number one has deferred. We'll be moving on to item number two. Site plan 108 Armstrong Court requested by SEC. Trailer storage on 2.11 acres, property located at 108 Armstrong Court. Tax map 29, parcel 2.18, I-2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District, property owned by 191 Charter Place, LLC. Mr. Logan. Thank you. Thank you. I'm about to get there. Okay. 108 Armstrong. This is a site plan request to build a truck parking lot at 108 Armstrong Court. Um, on the imagery here, you can see Charter Place. No and Armstrong comes off the charter place, and this is I-24 um, running across the top of your screen. Uh, this site is about 2.11 acres, and uh, currently it's vacant. Uh, there is um, a wooded area on the, a couple of wooded areas on this lot, uh, but there's no structures, no buildings. Um, you see the zoning map here. The dark blue indicates I-2. I-2 zoning, which is industrial uh, zoning. And uh, the applicant uh, was here at the workshop, and uh, there were not that many technical items. First, I'll go here in the imagery, or the photos. So there's currently gravel on a portion of the lot, and uh, you can see these boulders here uh, that have been placed there to keep um, people off the property that are not supposed to use it. So um, there's a ditch section here. And then uh, looking further in the distance, you can see this tree line. And uh, when this was taken about three weeks ago, actually it's been longer than that. It's been over a month because um, this was a deferral. So the trees were starting to leaf, leaf out. Um, uh, but you can see they create a natural barrier there uh, between the residential area that lies behind uh, this site. Uh, this is the current site plan. It's been updated since March. Uh, and you can see, um, see they're proposing 30 parking spaces here. And um, they're also showing uh, this circular, uh, these circular lines or the uh, truck turning movements. So they're showing the radius for the truck turns. Um, they are proposing a fence that's part of their landscape buffer, and that's shown on the site plan. And there's also, a, it's 50 foot landscape buffer is what's required by the city ordinance. A minimum of 50 feet wide between the residential areas and um, the industrial area. And, um, they have indicated that stream buffer on the plan. And um, as part of, part of last month's discussion um, about the landscaping in this area, um, they've submitted the landscape plan that's in your packets. Uh, there weren't many technical items overall on this site, and I believe they've taken care of, did engineering have any? Engineering had none, so that's uh, that's all the technical items for this site. Um, there is a note on the plan that states that it does not lie in any special flood hazard. It does not lie in any special flood hazard area, so it's not in a FEMA zone. Um, that pretty much completes. It's fairly simple, as there's no building being constructed, and we'll be happy to answer questions. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Do we have any questions or comments from the board? Chairman, uh, looking at the notes, uh, we got the 40-foot entrance and more buffering. Uh, what about the screen fence? Does that get indicated on here or not? 
It yeah. is indicated in the landscape plans. Thank you. It states that there will be a five foot tall black opaque fence. You're good. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Do we have a, like a materials board on that so I could like see what I'm looking at? Uh, no, sir. There's no building going on site. Just a parking lot for so they don't overflow parking. One of our requests was that and rather than typical chain link, we requested black vinyl with opaque fencing. Thank you, Mr. Holliday. Yeah, and I really uh, appreciate that because I was late to that workshop, but you guys took care of that, and it's a pet peeve of mine, but I appreciate it. Good. I think it's great. Any other questions or comments? Just confirm you said it's five feet or six feet for the fence. I might have misremembered. It's either five or six. And there's a note on the landscape plan indicating the height. I saw prop. I saw prop six, so that's why I was proposed asking. six foot. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank okay. you, sir. Well, I'm, personally, I'm going to say thank you to the engineers and the uh, the owners with the screening. I know we have a lot of uh, phone calls from neighbors in this area, and a lot of concern about vehicles back in here and being visible. So, thank you for that. I make a motion to approve as submitted. We have a motion to approve as submitted by Alderman Coates. So we have a second. Our second. Second by Mayor Cole. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. The motion passes. On to our next item. Item number three. Site plan High Point 24, Lot 1, requested by Kim Lee Horn. Four buildings totaling 580,638 square feet on 78 acres. Proposed property located on Blair Road, tax map 29, parcel 19.14, 20, and 20.03, I-2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District, property owned by John M. Burns, High Point 24, City of Laverne, and Crown Castle GT Company, LLC. Mr. Logan. This is a request for site plan approval for High Point 24, and um, this is the first site plan that's been submitted for this site after the concept plan was approved in March. And um, this uh, lot, this is called Lot 1, and Lot 1 comprises about 78 acres. And you can see on the screen the imagery here. So this site does touch I-24 and um, also touches Blair Road. And it is zoned I-2 that you can see here on the zoning map. Um, all this dark navy blue is uh, I-2 zoning. And I know we've covered that several times in the past and with the concept plan. So this site plan specifically calls for four new buildings of um, distribution warehouse space uh, slash industrial space to be built uh, along I-24 uh, and Blair Road. And here's some site photos. And, um, we've uh, seen these a few times, but this is Blair Road near Portico Place, and that's the bridge as you're driving uh, toward Sam Ridley Parkway, um, toward the curve, and then Sam Ridley Parkway. And this is the gated entrance that goes to the cell tower um, at the higher elevation on the site. And then there's a close up there. 327 Blair Road was the address originally submitted several months back. But uh, this is the Smyrna side. Um, it's taken from Laverne, but the apartments you're seeing are in Smyrna. And this is the other gated entrance. And this is right next to the apartments in Smyrna. And uh, another view there, um, cedar trees that are existing today between this lot and the apartments. And then this is the curve with the Welcome to Smyrna sign, again, as you're headed toward Sam Ridley. Uh, you can see, of course, Blair is uh, narrow, and there'll be some road improvements that come along with uh, this project that will improve Blair. Uh, this is a phasing plan, so... The red portion is not part of the site plan, uh, but we're looking at the outer edge sort of in a horseshoe fashion that goes around the red area, which is part of this site plan. And then you can see the four buildings 
there as they lead kind of north northeast toward I-24, and then next to I-24. And then here's um, the actual site plan. It shows the four buildings. And then this is a closer view. And building 100 is the southerly most building, and it will be roughly 90 feet beyond the edge of pavement of Blair Road, somewhere in that range, 90 feet. Um, when this is built out, it's 1.1 million square feet of space, and this site plan covers 580,000 square feet of the 1.1 million. So a large chunk of the total space. And then this is a closer view of the driveway uh, intersection with Blair Road. So this shows the turn lanes that will be installed and some of the widening to the curve in Blair Road. Also shows the island um, there at the end of the private drive. And uh, there's been a lot of discussion over a couple months with uh, trucks turning the wrong way. So this design is the same as we saw two weeks ago at the workshop. It's not changed. And then there's another overall shows in the end what all seven buildings will look like. So these are the driveway. This is an extra exhibit. It's also printed out in your packets if you want to look at that. But this is the, again, this was submitted for workshop and again tonight the applicant submitted these. So this shows the close up of the uh, private drive at the intersection of Blair Road and also has the turning movements for the uh, heavy trucks as, as well as the uh, fire equipment. And there's a little bit closer up there you can see the island and uh, the turn lanes and this uh, the diagram on the left is showing that it would not be possible for a large truck to turn right out of this uh, driveway and I don't believe there are any technical comments uh, everything's been taken care of since workshop so that completes report thanks Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions or comments from the board? Uh, just a couple of in, in questions for, for the uh, applicant. If you could just bring up the podium, please, sir. Please, sir. State your name and address for the record. <clears throat> Good evening. Brendan Bowles, 214 Oceanside Drive, Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, two just informational questions. Building 700, when it's finished, how much that will be able to be seen from I-24? A couple of citizens asked me the question, and they, I just want to make sure they understand. We got a, a graphic prepared for tonight to show uh, the building 700. So this would be going southbound on I-24. And I can bring it up here closer if you want. Southbound on I-24, uh, you know, Martin Colonel's in the distance. So this is 700 here, and then this would be the phase two buildings in the middle. So you know you'll be able to see. Uh, the building itself, obviously there's be some trees that are in the existing right way of the interstate. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> and we'll have new landscaping that's going in as well. Up there. So that's one view, and then I can show you this other view. Uh, Mr. Coates, <clears throat> this is the other, look in the other direction, heading back towards uh, Nashville from very nice. And you got a third one there. You got to show it to us now. <laughs> this is a uh, um, corner office there that uh, at seven hundred. Okay. Showing more of the glass and the storefront there on the corner. I'm I'm glad you showed us that one because I was a little disappointed with the other two as they look very much like some of our existing warehouses. So um, the, the 700 didn't look very office-y till that one. Right, yeah. The corners are where you're gonna have more of the, more of the pop for the architecture and the, and the glass, and then about halfway down, you'll see some more glass, so. And then my second question is, any 
tenants that you want to, any tenants that are interested in the properties, any ideas yet? I mean, just. I'll let Mr. Kineski with Panatoni <clears throat> answer that one. I know that's been a, yeah. a question that's come up at previous work sessions. I don't know if there's any update, but Jeff can. Jeff Kineski, Panatoni Development Company, uh, 35 Music Square, East Nashville. There, there's no update on the marketing. We haven't started marketing this in, in earnest yet, but we do have a lot of local tenants that at, at Park 24 that want to expand. So the Cardinals of the world and that, that type of group that are, have a really big presence here already have, have expressed some interest in, in staying in the city. Okay. Appreciate that. Just everyone asked the question, and I'd just like to let everyone know. So with that, Mr. Chairman, with everything been addressed, I appreciate them working with us. It's been a good project to work through, and I think we've got everything as we want it. And with that, I'll make a motion to accept as submitted. I, I have two questions real quick before we make that motion. Motion please. on the table. Go ahead, sir. Um, the back of the property, um, it's a great illustration. How, from the back of the property to that subdivision, Woodland Hill subdivision, what's the distance in that? And do you own that property by chance? Or Are you is talking it, about this piece yes, right here? that is exactly what I'm talking we about. We do not own that property, and I can't quite see the scale on that. It looks like, uh, let me see here. But instead of squinting, I'll look here on this. We're roughly six or 700 feet away from there. Okay, good. Uh, the second question was, is I know there was some talk in the workshop about signs, um, and this probably doesn't pertain to you as much as it may be a question for the board, is, uh, the right turn is a big concern for everybody. Is there a weight limit on that road? And if so, if there's not a weight limit on the road, can there one be put on the road in order to keep that from happening? So that's more of a staff question. Mr. Leach, please, sir. Uh, there's no weight limit on the road. Typically, weight limits are only placed on a road if there is a structure that would fail. Uh, there's no actual structures on Blair Road. All the drainage is carried by basically RCP pipes, which are definitely below the berry depths that are the minimum requirements, usually about one foot. And these tend to be somewhere between three and six feet deep. So there's no actual structure that would fail if you overload the roadway. Now trucks will be a little harder on the roadway, but what uh, Pantone and Kimley Horn have done with their design is try to, it'll be a very, 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 very difficult movement to make in a truck to get out. So, and, and, and I agree, and th thank you for, for commenting on that. I, it was just a question in my mind that uh, I wanted to know. And Mr. Rutledge, we did uh, show the graphic for the signs on C200, if you're interested in seeing. We added the directional sign for the Interstate 24, and then we added the graphic for the no trucks turning right. So we got three signs coming down the driveway, then one opposite as they're sitting there making the decision on which way to go. But very good, I, I'm happy with it. I was just thinking of something else there as a deterrent. And just to confirm, uh, Mr. Leach, that's as far as Woodland Hills, there's a, a, a good ridge that's elevated and up from that. Yeah, there's probably, and I would, Brendan could probably answer looking through the plans, but there's probably 25 foot elevation in between that building going up then another 30 to 40 going back down that hill. So they're gonna be very well sheltered from any I mean, they're going to hear some blasting when they do the construction. Yeah, but, this, you, you know, know of course the eventually. water, yeah, the water tower sits on a knob itself and we're not disturbing that. So I don't even think these folks would, would be able to see across and over the top of that hill. Uh, possibly it, with no trees, you know, in the fall, they may see a corner or something here, but this is pretty heavily wooded and will remain that. It seems like a tough place to develop, you know, Good. right there. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'll second Graham's motion. We have a second. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. That will move on to our next item. Final plat, High Point 24, requested by Reagan Smith. Five new lots and dedication of right of way on 144 acres. Property located on Blair Road, tax map 29, parcel 19.14, 20, 20.02, 20. 20. 03 and 20.05. I2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District, property owned by John M. Burns, High Point 24, City of Laverne, and Crown Castle GT Company, LLC. Mr. Logan. Thank you. This is a final plat request for High Point 24. It's requested by Reagan Smith, and uh, this covers 144 acres of property, and uh, the purpose of the plat is to uh, get this land ready for industrial development. Uh, that you just saw in the previous item. And uh, when all of this is said and done, there'll be five lots total. 
and uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. But of course, this is the overhead, um, the ortho that shows the site as it is today, that stretches from Blair all the way to the interstate. And you see the rock quarry. There's this dark area here near the middle of the screen. Uh, some people call it the rock quarry site. Uh, to, let's see, moving on to Platt, they, this is going to show the final layout of the lots. So you probably remember from the workshop that uh, lot one is very irregularly shaped and kind of, uh, kind of goes in a horseshoe pattern. Uh, it kind of encompasses this whole middle part and then the middle part will be another lot. And um, what they've done is allowed um, the cell tower uh, that's existing and the water tank that's existing, they've made um, arrangements for those structures to be on their own lots. So that explains the total number. Uh, nothing's changed since the workshop on this plat. And um, there is a total of about 0.83 acres of right of way that will be dedicated to the city and that area is along Blair Road. Um, and Everything is in order. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions or comments on this item? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Just Please. as a procedural note, since there is a property donation as part of this plat, that'll have to go before the Board of Mayor and Alderman before this plat can be signed off on. But it's to our good. I just want to make everyone aware of that procedurally. Very good. Any other questions or comments? This item. So procedurally, the proper motion is a favorable recommendation. Uh, no, it's the uh, excuse me. The planning commission can't approve this. I just before it can be a final approved with the uh, the planning commission secretary signing it and you know everyone else signing it, it'll have to go before the board of mayor and aldermen to basically accept the donation and all that other fun stuff and. I don't think Bruce is looking at me too strangely, so that should be the process. I don't think we've done that before, so I'm, I'm, I'd have preferred an attorney for that yeah, I would, I, on a final plot. Yeah, I, I would want to look into that first before we said one way or the other. Okay. My, my general thought being that with right away, it's usually not a question of it, but this is outside right away, so it's more of real property. So my thought would be it would have to go before the... Board of Mayor and Alderman, but that's up to the attorney on that one. Well, regardless of, of but other the acceptance that, portion, I'll go ahead and make a motion to accept as submitted. Very good. I'd like to second that. We have a motion to accept as submitted. We have a second by Mr. Holliday. Motion by Mayor Cole. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion passes. So from my understanding, uh, Mr. Richardson or Mr. Cope, so it will go to Mayor and Alderman, Mayor and Alderman will sign off, and then our secretary will sign off on it. And everything we're proceeding as accordingly, correct? Correct, right. yes, sir. Thank you. Very good. Motion passes. We'll be moving on to the next item. Item number five and item number six have both been deferred. We are moving on to item number seven. Recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Alderman, rezoning of property requested by Ramiro and Samuel Rodriguez. Approximately 2.5 acres, property located at 1517 Newview Street and 1519 Newview, Newview Street and Humble Drive, tax map 14-0, Group A, parcels 6, 7, and 5.01, current zoning district R3, high density residential zoning district, proposed zoning district I2, heavy industrial zoning district, property owned by Ramiro and Samuel Rodriguez. Mr. Logan. This is a request to rezone property at 1517 and 1519 Newview, as well as Humble Drive. And uh, heretofore, the Humble Drive location is vacant, so it was never assigned an address. That's why there's no house number or street number listed in your packet or on the agendas. Um, going to the uh, ortho photography here, there's Three lots that you can see outlined in blue. So 1517 and 1519 New View are very long and narrow lots. And then the third lot comes in off of Humble Drive. So zooming in, 
Now you can see 1517 and 1519. This is a swimming pool there on 1519. The corner lot is not part of this rezoning, so don't want to confuse anybody. And then the humble drive lot is in the rear with just a few trees on it and no structure. Um, moving to the zoning map, you can see uh, the area is zoned R3 in this green color. Uh, again, New View runs east and west, and Humble is north and south. Uh, it does butt up next to a large area of I-1, which is this light blue um, area, which in includes uh, Carter Lumber and the Kite Home Center is, is uh, immediately north of this site. And these are photos from the street that shows 1517 and 1519 new view and uh, you see some of the fences there and this is the uh, driveway at the end of 1519 uh, new view you see the house there and um, kind of looking up the property line between the two um, lots on new view and then as you round the corner and go up Humble, this is the view that you will see. Uh, you can see a large area of gravel that has been placed uh, there in the past, I'm not sure how long, but fairly recent. Um, and then uh, you can see here some of the equipment and uh, some of the materials that are on the site, uh, a lot of gravel. Um, and then this is a even larger view of the expanse there from Humble Drive. Uh, the name of this business is Amigos Concrete, and that's not been mentioned yet, but you'll see this um, in your packets as they submitted paperwork, and then I've got the slides here. Um, so let me just go ahead and go to that. So you can see the Amigos Concrete LLC logo. And then uh, they submitted this, and uh, these are some of the maps that they put together uh, so you can see the Kite Home Center is north of them. That's in that I-1 zoned area. And then um, taking a closer view of their property. So this is 15, 17, and 15, 19 new view. And then going up to Humble, you can see the frontage here. So they've got listed 95 feet of frontage on Humble. And then they've measured 200 feet back. And then this width is about 280. So um, the only dimension that's missing is in this area. And I, I haven't seen a dimension shown for that area. But if you do the math, even without this dimension, you're going to land at between a half acre and three quarters of an acre, give or take. So uh, it's important to remember in the zoning ordinance that in this zone that they're requesting, there's no minimum lot size. So a half acre would do it, a, a three quarters of an acre would do it. There's no minimum lot size, which is pretty typical in industrial. So anyway, this was not here at the workshop and we didn't know any dimensions. And, but it was determined that you, they cannot live and be rezoned industrial. And, and if you remember at the workshop, they were considering rezoning the entirety of 1517 and 1519, which means they're going to have to move and make other arrangements because they cannot live on industrially zoned land. Um, and I haven't heard any changes to that since uh, the workshop. So um, that's kind of summing that part up. Um, I've gone through the photos, and this is what they've submitted. Um, so staff will be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Do we have any questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chair. Please. Um, so, Mr. Logan, so this is um, this is now subdividing a lot, three, three separate lots, creating a fourth lot, and then rezoning that. Um, just want to confirm with uh, Evan or Bruce that, that we can do all of that at one, or make that recommendation all at once. I would think that the subdivide and the rezoning would be two separate items because one's going to go as a recommendation to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen where the subdivision can be handled here. That's correct. And we have some site planning going on as well. 
Correct. The, the, the building, the existing building may be problematic and the new building may be, depending on what those uh, setbacks are. If, if you take a look at the, the uh, plat that's been supplied, Miracle Heights, Section 3, so I would infer they're referring to lots 74, 75, and 76. So I, I would have to see that you'd have to break those off or get that surveyed and then platted before we could move forward. Yeah. Uh, I kind of feel the same way as well. So you typically, what, when I've encountered these in the past, It's really a difficult position for the city because if you tell them to hire a surveyor and subdivide it, but it hasn't been rezoned, then you're really opening up to some liability. So I, there's really no other way to do it but take their rough estimate of the rezoning and then later apply it to your zoning maps, and then they know they've got the zoning before they spend a lot of money on a surveyor. I mean, they, they won't know they have the, the, the zoning, though until the Board of Mayor and Aldermen decides that part. So even the, the even this board can. I see that right. slightly problematic for the Board of Mayor and Aldermen so, to not have it situated correctly. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just tack on with Bo. We, there's nothing in our ordinance that requires us to zone to parcel lines. So you can zone based off rough lines, basically the exhibit shown, you know, so this board, if they so chose, could you know send a favorable or unfavorable based on that usage to the board of mayor and aldermen to determine that zoning, and you know the board of mayor and aldermen as a prerequisite to attaining that zoning it or a co-requisite, however you want to look at it, could basically say if we give you this zoning, it has to be subdivided, you know, just as you know a contingency upon that zoning. So that's one way. It, could be handled, but that's just an option. There, there, there might be an issue with respect to notice. Anytime that there's a rezoning, the specific uh, map and parcel, specific property that's going to be rezoned has to be advertised. Notice has to be given to the public. And so to the extent that there's any discrepancy in what is noticed versus what is actually considered for zoning could, could be problematic for the city. And I think either way, we need to get the last dimension. We have one dimension mission up here to get the dimension set up. Obviously, that's the dimension. And the rear setback. The, yeah. The rear setback's missing as well. Would there not be other things that would have to be considered, like the um, gravel surface with the rezoning? That, not with that the rezoning. Be rezoning. That would be a site plan. Same with the building. Yeah. Um, well, since we're expressing concerns, I appreciate the concerns in regards right, just, to the paperwork. Go ahead, man. Well, also for them to understand what might be needed to move forward before they go to a lot of expense as well. Make sure they understand the what would be required of it once that did happen to make the changes they're looking for. All right. Chairman, can we bring the applicant up so just so we can discuss Please. some more? Is there a representative here? If you would, state your name and address for the record. Simona Gomez, 1570, Novia Street in Laverne. Thank you. Daniel Rodriguez, 1570. Ramiro Rodriguez, 1519, Novia Street, Laverne. Thank you very much. And obviously, see, you see that we have some concerns in regards to the paperwork and everything being done legally and correctly. So that's our, our first step. So I'm going to open the table up to the board and Questions or comments? Well, first comment is is that we're missing a dimension on the paperwork that you have submitted. The top purple line does not have a measurement on it, nor does the uh, <coughs> bottom left-hand line. Yeah, you, you, it's hard to see, but it's a, it's a wood fence across. That is on the way to the wood fence. Right, but it's the dimensions are missing. Okay, okay. And, and we have to be very specific and exact in these situations. Mm. Um, I believe it workshop. I, actually, I'm quite surprised that you're here. Uh, I, I didn't think you'd get it all together, but <laughs> we're, we're moving forward, and that's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, please, as an aside, I think probably to address Mr. Cope's comment as well as my own to a certain extent, probably to legally define the area to be basically rezoned, they will need a surveyor 
to basically lay that out and stamp it as the area to be rezoned. So they wouldn't be doing a subdivision, but they would need to have it laid out in an official manner that would be reproducible and that we could add to the map and also advertise legally to satisfy our requirements. So, so there's still some steps I feel that we need to take to, to even get to a voting point at this point. Mm -hmm. um, probably my recommendation would be to defer, get with staff. Uh, did did y'all get with staff in this time period? Yes. Since the last We've meeting? Had a few meetings. Okay. Mm -hmm. We probably need to have a few more. Yeah, we probably need to have a couple more meetings. And like Mr. Well, Leach said. And, and what Adam's referring to is sometimes called a boundary survey. And it's just, I've seen it a lot on like properties that are 100 years old and they're just trying to firm up where the iron pins were put in in 1900. Yes, sir. Um, again, I just want you all to know that you're gonna have to spend some money. And so if it, if it goes this way, and there's no guarantees. So I just don't wanna be the person, this needs to be talked about. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'd, you you would not be the first customer that's have had gone or first applicant that's gone through a process and gotten either favorable or unfavorable. But in order for us to get to that decision, we have to have the proper information. And right now, I'm feeling that we're a little bit light on information. We don't have everything that we legally need to do this correctly. Does that make sense? Yeah. So my best recommendation. Well, we, we actually can make the motion here. I, I mean, I, I would make the motion to just defer it, give them another month just to come back before uh, the Planning Commission workshop next month and we can go from there. Well, if, if we defer, does it count against their three? Yeah. The non rezoning. Does not, sir? Okay. So I'm, I'll make the motion to defer. So we have a motion to defer. Do we have a second? I'll second the motion. We have a second. All in favor, Discussion. Second. We have a discussion, please, Mr. Holliday. I just want to indicate that I do not see a favorable outcome on this situation based on what is uh, presented before us. I understand that we are considering a deferral motion, um, but as we're talking to yeah. citizens for uh, additional investment and such, uh, from my personal perspective as a voting member of this board, uh, I'm I'm challenged to find a, a favorable outcome uh, on, on what, what is being suggested. And in fairness to the potential investment that you may make, I wanted to make that statement clear. Very good, Mr. Holliday, thank you. You kind of get the gist of that, guys? So we have a motion to defer the item until next month so we can do some more paperwork and discuss it. That's the motion that's on the table. I'm fixing to take a vote. Okay, do we need to talk to Mr. Bob? Uh, yes, okay. yes. Make an appointment? Yes, yes, you? but you I just want to say that <laughs> there's not a lot new you're going to get from me. I, I, I'm going to tell you to go hire somebody. Yes. That's, no, I, that's fine, and th we need guidance. Yes, I and, mean, that, you and know, I, I'm going to work with you on your application. I'm going to make sure you got... That's fine. You just, just Y'all did an do... awesome job. You've done a great job. <laughs> way more than, like the chairman said, way more than anybody expected. I just... I don't have any more tools to help you. I'm running out. Yeah, we, we, we'll have to refer you to somebody, but we can, we can point you in that direction and you can pick somebody and go from there and then bring it back next month before here and we can go from there with it. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. We will see you at workshop next Thank month. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Very good. With that, we'll move on to our next item. Item number eight, site plan, Spirit of Life Ministries, requested by Azmatech Engineering, property located at 253 Stones River Road, tax map 15L, group B, parcel 24, R1 Low Density Residential Zoning District, property owned by Ministerio Espiritual de Vida. Mr. Logan. This is the site plan request for the uh, Spirit of Life Ministries on Stones River Road. It's located at 253 Stones River Road. And um, currently this property is zoned R1. As you can see here, uh, near the center of this photo, um, you can see the orange color. So this church was here um, in May of 2019. 
And at that time, they did receive site plan approval for a church of 22,100 square feet and um, the um, adjoining uh, parking areas and detention. And uh, not much has happened on the property since May of 19, so we've received this new request for a scaled down site plan. They've reduced the building uh, by roughly 50%. Currently, they're proposing a building of 10,800 square feet instead of 22,100. Uh, going back to the uh, imagery here, so this is um, about a five acre lot on Suns River Road and it's near Mason Circle and um, you see the homes on Mason Circle as well as um, the homes on um, Stones River Road. They, um, they have about, I said five, it's 5.45 acres. Um, they are providing 122 parking spaces in this site plan where only 89 are required. And this particular site is not contained in any overlay district. And the uh, photos here, you see the uh, home that has been painted uh, since May of 19. They painted the brick and um, looks, uh, looks a little different than it used to look. And they've also, um, they have a silt fence along Mason Circle that you'll see coming up in a photo. There is existing sidewalk in place along Stones River Road, so that's not an improvement that's part of their site plan. This views from Mason Circle, and you can see the black silt fence that was put up a while ago. And uh, you also see the rear of their property, or the rear of the house, and some storage buildings. And um, this is the site plan uh, that's been updated since the workshop two weeks ago. So uh, this shows, kind of zoom in a little. Here's their building with the 10,800 square feet. And they show parking that would be built all around the new building. And the dumpster pad location is in this northwest corner that we talked about at the workshop two weeks ago. Uh, their main entrance is here on Sunshine Road. And I believe that's the only entrance, actually. And they've kept some of the uh, turn lanes and acceleration lanes that were talked about back in May of 2019. They've got that same layout for their main entrance. Um, the existing home does stay on the site and they plan to use it and have already been using it. And then uh, this is just an open area here in the front of the church and along Stones River Road. And they talked about this sidewalk. They're proposing a sidewalk from the existing house to the parking lot for the new building. And the other sidewalk will be added along Mason Circle as there's no sidewalks currently on Mason. They're only on Stones River Road. Uh, there were several engineering comments last month and um, I know some of those were addressed, but I'll let Mr. Leach speak to those. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Logan. Mr. Leach, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, all the engineering comments have been addressed. I did uh, request revised drainage calculations, but I did not receive them. However, the previous application had the same size pond with more impervious surface, so essentially they'll be over detaining, so it'll work out. Very good. Any questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chair. Please, sir. Mr. I have a Ericle. question for the applicant as far as um, what changes with uh, landscaping they've made. Will you state your name and address for the record, sir? Uh, Rocky LeBlow, uh, 711 Hickerson Drive, White House, Tennessee. Thank you, sir. Uh, the question I asked was um, as far as uh, what changes in the landscape plan have y'all made since the workshop? Uh, I added a whole mess of trees all the way around the property now. So that uh, uh, it's yeah. even way more than what y'all passed the first time. Mr. Chairman, just by looking at putting them side by side, I had the one for the workshop. They have uh, increased the length of the tree and bushes uh, on the property. Um, let's see, where the existing house is now, the first house behind it 
It's now gone to the edge of the fence, so it's totally blocked in that. On the bottom left corner of the grass seed area, they've added, looks like 10 or 12, 14 bushes and three or four trees. And it's now consistent with the rest of it. Um, so I think they've improved it dramatically. Very good. Any other questions or comments? There being none, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to accept and submitted. We have a motion to accept and submitted. Seconded by Mayor Cole. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes on to our next item. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you all for your hard work. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Next item. Set bond amount for High Point 24, Lot 1, tax amount 29, parcel 19.14, 20, 20.02, 20.03, and 20.05, requested by Kimley Horn. Five new lots on 144 acres, I-2 Heavy Industrial Zoning District. Mr. Logan. This is the request to set the bond amount for the uh, item we saw earlier tonight, High Point 24, um, parcels 1914, 20, 20.02, 20.03, 20 and 20.05. So the, um, the request uh, for the bond setting, uh, it, this comes from Kimley Horn, and this is for the five lots uh, just mentioned on the 144 acres. Per the subdivision regulations, the developer has submitted three construction bids, an average plus the required 20% contingency, and a stamp estimate provided by the engineer. Three bids are from Austin Construction, Yancey Brothers, and Jones Brothers. The engineer's estimate comes to $828,789 in total. Very good. Is that a number that staff is happy with? It is. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments from the board? It's like comment how close the bids were. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's you know, very good. I appreciate the Kimberly Horn getting the signatures on each quote. And with that, I'll make a motion to accept the bonds as submitted. Good. Motion to accept is submitted by Alderman Coates. Our second. Second by Mayor Cole. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Next item. I believe it is our bonds and letters of credit update. Mr. Leach. Um, so just as a general update, obviously you can tell nothing changed from last month. Uh, Carruthers Crossing, I think, is starting to pull their permits now or getting danger close to doing so. Portico Place, I uh, suspect it would have been added to this this month, but they have not tendered their bond or finished their sewer. So they're still in limbo, but they're probably another month out from getting ready to start pulling permits. That's it. Very good. Any questions or comments from the board? With that, thank everyone for your time. So our I, have a, I, I do have a question. Please. It had nothing to do with what he just said. I, Please, I have Mr. a question Rutledge. about our old business. Uh, the first item on the agenda was uh, SEC Inc., the 226 acres. How many deferrals is that for them? This should be their second, sir. That is their second deferral. Oh. That's all I've got. Thanks. Very good. Any other questions or comments? With that, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.